Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. I pray that God will bless you today as we spend this time together. Psalm 8 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honour. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. What an amazing, wonderful God we serve, a God who is mighty, the one who created all things by the word of his power and who sustains all things by the word of his power. And yet he is mindful of us. God so loved the world, the Bible tells us, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, God is intimately concerned with the affairs of this earth and he is Lord of all. Whatever you see going on in the world, God is still Lord and ultimately evil will be destroyed and everything will be judged righteously. With that in mind, we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. And today we're praying for our brothers and sisters in the nation of Yemen. Let me read to you from the World Watch List booklet regarding what life is like for Christians in Yemen. Yemen is strongly tribal and it's illegal to convert from Islam to Christianity. Yemeni Christian converts are at great risk of being ostracized, expelled or even killed by their families, clans and tribes. Islamic extremist groups threaten so-called apostates with death if they do not return to Islam. In other areas, including those controlled by the Islamist Houthis, converts risk imprisonment. In detention centers, Christian detainees have reportedly suffered physical and mental torture. Please join with us as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Yemen today. And of course, we continue to pray regarding this appalling conflict in Ukraine. Please join with us as we pray to the Lord of heaven and earth that he would bring this conflict to an end. And now let's turn our hearts and our minds to worshipping him, this God who is so great and yet he is mindful of us. We're going to sing that great, great, beautiful old hymn today. I will sing the wondrous story. God bless you as we worship the Lord together today.
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that your blessings are new every morning. And Lord, we give you praise. We worship you today for who you are and for what you've done. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. And thank you, Lord, that you never change, that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And that, Lord, we can trust in you and know that you will keep your promises towards us. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for our salvation. And Lord, we bless you this morning. We bless your holy name and rejoice in you. Lord, we bring before you now, right now, the, the church, the brothers and sisters in Christ in the country of Yemen. Lord, we pray for that war-torn country that's been in the grip of civil war for so many years. Lord, we pray for peace among the factions there. And Lord, we pray particularly for our brothers and sisters in Christ that you will protect them. May they know of your love for them each and every day. Will you provide for those who are in poverty? And will you keep your church safe in that land? And we pray that more will come to know you as their Lord and Saviour in that land. And Lord, we bring also to you the country of Ukraine. Lord, we pray for peace in that land as it's come to a year that there has been conflict with Russia. Lord, will you bring your peace in that situation? And we pray for your church in Ukraine as well, Lord, that you will strengthen them. You will protect each and every one. And that, Lord, they will be able to minister your love to others at this time. We thank you for those who are bringing aid to that country. And Lord, we pray that it will get to the right people as they are, as, as is needed, Lord. And Father, we pray for our nation too. Lord, we pray for those in government at this moment. Oh Lord, will you give them your wisdom? Lord, we pray that those who know you will have a voice. A voice that will bring your wisdom in government. And Lord, we pray for your church in this land that it will be strong in you. And Lord, it will be a light to this nation. Oh, we thank you for those who are out on the streets, who are spreading your word and your gospel. Lord, will you strengthen them? Will you protect them? And Lord, will you give them their, your wisdom and give them the boldness and the words to say as they share your love each and every day on the streets of this land? Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers and that, Lord, we just pray for your kingdom to come, for your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I'm reading this morning from Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. 
So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is a remarkable miracle that is performed through the apostles Peter and John at the gate beautiful. It's remarkable for many reasons. First of all, I want you to notice in verse 2 it tells us that a certain man lame from his mother's womb. This man has never ever walked. He's been lame from the moment he was born, even in his mother's womb, he was lame. And yet, when Peter takes him by the right hand and lifts him up, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. That is remarkable that he receives the strength to be able to stand. But then it says he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. This is a man who has never been able to walk in his entire life. And now not only does he receive the strength to be able to walk and to leap, he actually is able to do it. He doesn't have to learn how to do it. This is a remarkable miracle in every respect. But there's an aspect of this miracle which very often does not receive much attention and I'd like to bring your attention to it today. I want you to notice what it says here in verse 8. It says, so he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. This man doesn't just stand and walk and leap and praise God. This man enters the temple. Now you might think that's no big deal, but I want you to notice that he is laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple. When he enters in to the temple with Peter and John, this is something that he has never ever done before. Why? Because the lame and the blind were excluded from the temple. It is only after this man receives his healing that he is able to enter in according to the tradition of the time. Now, I want I want you to notice I say according to the tradition of the time, because this has nothing to do with the commandments of God. God had never said that the lame and the blind should not enter the temple. This comes from an incident in the book of Second Samuel. And this is when King David uh, conquers the city of Jerusalem before he makes it his capital. This is 2 Samuel chapter 5, beginning at verse 6. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David, saying, You shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking David cannot come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is the city of David. Now David said on that day, whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, the lame and the blind who are hated by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. I want you to notice what it says here. In verse 8, it says, therefore, they say the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. It does not say, therefore, God says it says, therefore, they say this is a tradition of men. This has nothing to do with the commandment of God. 
God had never said the lame and the blind shall not enter in to the temple. God never said the lame and the blind are not allowed to come and worship me. He did say that the offering you brought should be without blemish. It should not be crippled. It should not be deformed. He said that that offering that you bring should be perfect or as near perfect as you can get it. But that was to do with an attitude of heart in worship. You don't come before God half-heartedly. You don't come before God just, you know, like it doesn't really matter. You just come before God and bring any old thing. No, this was to do with an attitude of heart towards God about giving him the respect and the honor that he, the maker of heaven and earth, the Lord of all things, truly deserved. But God had never said that the lame and the blind should not enter in to the temple. This was something that came because of that incident in the life of David. Therefore, they say the lame and the blind shall not enter in to the house of the Lord. There are many, many wrong attitudes that we have about entering in to the presence of God. And there's one thing that you will hear many, many people say, God would never have me. I'm not good enough for God. I'm not holy enough from God. Even the apostle Peter, when Jesus first called him after Jesus performed a wonderful miracle and, and, and the, the, the fishermen had been fishing all night and had not been able to catch any fish. And then Jesus says to them, let down your nets on the other side. And they bring in a, a wonderful catch of fish that is so great they have to call the other boats to help them to bring it in. Their nets are breaking. There are so many fish. And it says that when Peter saw this, he fell to his knees and he said, get away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. There are many people who think I can never be good enough for God. I cannot come to God. But the problem is that this has built up into a tradition, into a man-made effort to try and justify not coming to God. God never said the lame and the blind shall not enter into my presence. And if you turn to Matthew's gospel and chapter 21, we're going to go from verse 12. Matthew 21 verse 12 says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants? You have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany. And he lodged there. Notice it says in verse 14, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Notice the order. Jesus allowed the blind and the lame to come to him in the temple. And once they were inside the temple, he healed them. He didn't say to them, you are not allowed in here. Let me heal you first and then you can come in. Jesus allowed them to come to him in the temple and in the temple was where he healed them. So many people have an idea that they have to get themselves cleaned up before they can approach God, that they have to get themselves good enough to approach God. They have to do enough good deeds. They have to give enough money to charity. They have to dare I say it, read their Bible enough. They have to pray hard enough. They have to fast. They have to do all of these things. They have to go through rituals. They have to, they have to make sure that they're living as good a life as possible before they feel that God will accept them. But the problem is the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short. Doesn't matter how hard we try. We all fall short. Because of that, we should be excluded 
from the temple, from the worship of God, because we're not clean. We're not good enough. We are spiritually blind. We are spiritually lame. We are, according to man's thinking, excluded from the presence of God. But Jesus said, come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus does not say, OK, you who are weary and burdened, get yourself cleaned up, get yourselves holy, get yourself sorted out, get your life good enough and then come to me and I will give you rest. No, Jesus simply says, come to me, you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. We need to get away from man's thinking when it comes to approaching God. The truth is, and it's an awful truth. The truth is that none of us can ever be good enough to approach God in our own goodness. Isaiah 64 and verse 6 tells us that our righteousnesses, that means our acts of goodness, our righteousnesses are like filthy rags in the sight of God. There is nothing that we can ever do to be good enough to approach God. And yet Jesus says, come to me come to me it's as you come to him that you receive the cleansing that you need it's as you come to him that you receive the forgiveness that you need it's as you come to him that he makes you fit to enter into the kingdom of heaven there is no other way jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 tells us by faith, by grace, you have been saved through faith and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no man may boast. Being accepted by God is not because we're good enough. It's because of his grace and it's through faith in Jesus Christ, the one who laid down his life for us. We were powerless to do anything to be able in, to enter into the presence of God by our own righteousness. But Romans chapter five tells us this verse six of Romans chapter five. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life and not only that but we also rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have now received the reconciliation while we were still sinners christ died for us jesus didn't wait for us to be good enough jesus didn't say when they have done enough when they have tried hard enough when they've worked themselves to the bone, trying to get themselves into the kingdom of heaven. If they hit a certain mark, if they hit the pass mark, then I will die for them. No, Jesus said, while they are still sinners, I'm still prepared to lay down my life for them, to shed my blood for them so that they can receive forgiveness, so that they can be cleansed from sin and so that they can receive the gift of everlasting life. Remember, if you think you're not good enough for God, the lame and the blind came to him in the temple and he healed them. They didn't get themselves healed first. They came to Jesus first and he healed them. If you want to be saved from sin, stop trying to make yourself good enough because you're never going to manage it. That simply brings guilt and shame and condemnation and destroys your life. Come to Jesus, 
the one who died for you, the one who 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be made sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you want to receive forgiveness, if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you come to Jesus and then he is the one who gives you the cleansing you need. He is the one who gives you the forgiveness you need. You cannot earn it. He gives it freely to those who will come to him, who will choose to turn away from their sin and follow him. That is the offer that he makes to you today, the gift of everlasting life through Jesus Christ. If you know that you are a sinner, there is hope for you today because Jesus saves all who will call upon his name. He has died for all those who know their sinners. So why don't you pray with me? Choose to turn away from your old way of sin. If you are saying, I want to follow Jesus, then you're in the right place. Praying this prayer in itself will not save you. Turning away from sin and choosing to believe in what Jesus did for you at the cross. Choosing to believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. If you believe that with your whole heart and if you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. To confess him as Lord means that from this moment on, Jesus is your Lord. What he says goes. You follow him. You follow his way and not your own way and not the way of sin. Are you ready to pray? Then pray with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am one of those who has fallen short of the glory of God. But Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came. You left the glory of heaven, lived as a man and died on the cross for me. I thank you, Jesus, that you are risen from the dead and that you are alive today and able to save all those who call upon your name. So today, Jesus, I am calling upon you. I am calling upon your name, Lord Jesus, and asking you to save me, to make me clean, to make me fit to enter in to the kingdom of heaven. I choose today to turn away from my own way and I choose to follow you as best as I can for the rest of my life. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit to enable me to live this new life in Christ. I surrender everything to you, Jesus. You are, from this moment on, my Lord, and I will follow you, love you, and serve you for the rest of my days. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer and you have really meant it in your heart, if you are determined to follow Jesus, then Jesus will have heard your cry. Jesus will have heard your prayer. And in that instant, he will have saved you from your sin. But there's one more thing that I would like to ask you to do. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father in heaven. Let somebody know that you have committed your life to Christ. Let us know here at Church of the True Vine. We would love to pray with you, to encourage you, to help you in whatever way we can as you begin this life following Jesus Christ. If you're anywhere in Clevedon or the North Somerset area, we meet uh, on Sundays at the Community Centre on Prince's Road in Clevedon at 10.30 a.m. It would be lovely if you were able to come and join us there. If you're a little bit nervous about coming into a room full of strangers, then just get in touch and we can arrange to meet with you beforehand so that at least you can enter into to, to faces that you know. If you're not in the Clevedon area, please get in touch anyway. We would love to pray for you and to encourage you again in whatever way we can. And of course, we are back here on YouTube 
at the same time next week. That's 10 a.m. UK time. So until then, God bless you. Bye-bye.